In this exercise, we wanted to have uh, the color selector to be able to display letters, to allow the users to use letters. Uh, this is the script, and um, let's uh, see how we can use it. So, I run it, Perl color selector. I just run it, and it gives me an error message that it can't find the examples color mat txt. Now, let's look at the code. So, it has a hard coded pass dollar file name to where the color map is. And it's supposed to be in the example subdirectory, probably because I was using it in a separate, in a different uh, place, and there uh, it was in the example subdirectory. But here we don't have it there in the example subdirectory. Here we have the color map right in the same directory where the script is. So we need to change that. Uh, we can change the hard coded version, but the script actually allows us to provide a minus minus file name and then provide the name of the file and that would replace the default so let's see if that works so I can run the script and provide minus minus file name and then the name of this file color map and indeed this worked so you can see that it provides a menu with just letters on the left hand side and then the colors so now I can pick let's say G and it will correctly select green and if I run it again and press let's say Z then it will correctly tell me that it's a bad selection there's no such key here as Z and I try it again and let's say Y and it selected yellow so it seems to be working now now let's see how does it work so you see that my file name is um, the definition of this file name variable where the, the name of the file is. It has a default, but you can override it with a command line option. Also, you could uh, you could provide a co uh, the color already on the command line, and um, but we haven't seen that. But if you um, if you don't don't provide it, and let's let's jump just ahead a bit. If there is, if there was no color, then you would go in and provide the menu. Okay, that's uh, sorry. No, this this part is if there is a color, then it will check whether that color is one of the correct colors. If there's no color, then you will get the menu and uh, allow you to select the color. So let's go back here at the beginning. So first thing we have to fill the colors hash with the key value pairs. And um, we have the file name here. We open it, open, get the file handler in dollar fh or die as usual. So if there if we couldn't open the file, that's what happened at the beginning, it would give, uh, throw an exception here and we won't continue. Then we read in the line, the file line by by. Let's say actually, uh, color map. This is how the file looks like, right? So it has the name of the color and the selected letter. So we jump off the end, and then the split the line according to space, and then we have the color name and the letter in this. So now we have to create a hash. Where with the individual keys. What we what we see here is an extra uh, check. So before this is how you assign. So you take the colors hash and in as the letter, use the letter as the key and the color name as the value. So we have a mapping from letter to name, which is good. But what happens if the user by mistake provided uh, two colors with the same letter. So that's what we are checking here. We check if we already have that letter in colors. So we check if that is... Uh, we don't check if it's defined or exists, though that would be maybe the more correct way, but we assume that none of the colors is called something which is which can be false. So if there is a color which the, the digit zero as uh, the name, this would 
work this wouldn't work correctly but all the normal colors are just real strings that have um, true value in Perl so if the color is there or if the letter if that letter is already used in the colors hash then we d print out a warning it could have been a die uh, to print out to throw an exception but in, the, in this case we just set a warning and then we disregarded that second or further uses of the same letter and here's the, here's the warning so if um, we have multiple letters then using the same for the for different colors if they have the same letter for several colors we'll get a warning here so that's one thing the other thing here is if the user provided a color then we are checking whether it's a valid color so we go over the values of the color we haven't seen that earlier the values function can fetch old values from from a hash we are not really interested in the keys here so dollar c is always one of the colors from the colors hash and then we check whether that's uh, the same color if it is then we assign true to this uh, some true value to the valid color a variable which was set to do to nothing to undef at the beginning and we go to the next iteration actually this next is, is really not necessarily here we just go over the, the keys then once we went over all the keys we can check if none of them was valid so if any of them was valid then it would be true but if none of them was valid then the valid color is still undef then we pr print out that the, the color is not valid and set set it to string to the empty string well you could uh, call here die or, or exit the script uh, maybe it would be a better solution and then we are where we get to the actual menu so if there was no color then we print out the request to select a number and then we go over the keys of the colors so we're going to be or it and it will sort it so the menu will be printed out according to the sorted according to the letter the the leading letter the, the letter that we are using to select the color then we print out the actual letter and the color in that place we are accepting uh, user input from the stdi and chomp it off that's regular thing and then we check whether the that letter in the colors hash if it provides a true value again we could check whether it exists but in our case that doesn't really matter and the end result is the same uh, if it's there if it's a true value then we use that and uh, as the color otherwise we just complain that the user selected something that wasn't there so that's it and then you have the dollar color uh, variable so let's just see what happens in the couple of other cases so we provide what if we provide color and we provide blue well boo I, I, I had a typo so it disregarded that or actually it complained about it and then showed me the the menu so now let's uh, select the B and that's blue but if I really type in blue then it's just accepted and doesn't show the menu so that was one thing and the other thing was what happens if we have let's say uh, white and it also uses B for whatever reason and then we run the script again and we get the B appears to be allocated to both blue and white so that's a really nice error message uh, but then it goes on and, and uh, accepts the blue in this case because this was just a, a warning